Good evening. You will get started. I uh, have a number of just reminders for us that uh, some of our changes from Sunday are extra information that we received from Sunday. Number one, uh, Chris Ray was taken to the hospital after having a seizure. So we need to keep him in our prayers along with his mother, Carrie, that, that generally takes care of him. Uh, also, Anita Carver, uh, symptoms extended to her and the loss of her uncle, Willard Vance, has well money. Uh, he leave, he has a, has, leaves a wife and three daughters. Continue to remember Valerie in your prayers as she continues to uh, uh, get over her surgery and the ongoing uh, things that she will be going through from an oncologist perspective. Uh, talk to H.D. Hood today. He's having eye surgery tomorrow. Let's remember him in our prayers. Also, Claude will burn Roberts, particularly the bird that's in the hospital. Claude is trying to take care of her. And Jeff Seals at home with COVID, along with a number of people that I see here on our list. So there is a list in the foyer out there of, of those that we need to continue to pray for. Just get that. Um, of course, continue to keep Judy. Mark and Betty in your prayers. Did talk to Annette today and she said the humans do better. So uh, he's getting over COVID. As we begin our devotional period, let's go to our Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity, Father. Father, we're grateful for the good health that you've given each of us, those of us who are here. Father, we have a number of congregations that are sick or have lost loved ones, and our prayer is that you would just take care of each one and their needs, Father. Help us as we have the opportunity to be there for them, to encourage them to them, Father. Father, we're grateful for your plan of a family where we could incur or would encourage one another uh, as we uh, continue to fellowship one another and love one another, Father. Father, we're thankful for every member here. We're thankful for our ministers. We're thankful for the leadership, Father. We pray that you continue to be with us and love us and help us to, to always do those things that would most glorify in our lives. Father, again, help us during this devotional period. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. One thing I did leave out that I, that's probably the most important is that uh, there were two baptisms Monday morning. This is from our deaf ministry. Uh, Ed Glass baptized Angela Begnaud, Benad, B E G N A U D, so, uh, and Connie Gordon. So, just if you have an opportunity, uh, put your hands up and congratulate the Dev Ministry of Two Baptists. So. The invitation song tonight will be 675. You need to mark that in a book. After the devotional, 675. Number four, we'll sing 482. 482. Here is the book.
evening. If you'll go ahead and turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 and 18, we will read that in just a little bit. Anytime there's work to be done, there are tools that have to be used. Doesn't matter if it's baking, sewing, uh, woodworking, mechanical work, electrical work, you have tools that you have to use. And there is no such thing as the perfect tool. You have tools that make the job easier. You have tools that could make the job harder. But the point is there are a variety of tools that you have to utilize to get a job done. Primary example of this, I've been having to do a lot of work on my personal truck lately. If I don't have wrenches, I can't take anything apart. A screwdriver will not work. If I have something electrical, I need to be using a screwdriver. The wrenches will not fit in the box, and things of that nature. So, and you see this a lot, or I'll say this, I did not realize how much we relied on that sort of thing until I started teaching my children how to use tools. Nothing dangerous, mind you, just little things. Because there are things that I have done work related that the tools may or may not be used for that purpose. Like using a pair of pliers as a hammer. That doesn't work when a five-year-old tries to do that. We, we saw the results of it. It ended in new pliers. There are things, the same thing can be said about us as the church. We are part of a body. And there are many parts to it. And we read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 through 18. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not part of the body. It is, for, it is not for this reason any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not a part of the body. It is not for this reason any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, who would be doing the hearing? If the whole were hearing, who would be the sense of smell? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body as he desires. God chose, designed the church wisely in this fashion of tools as well. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we learned that there are many different parts of the body and each does a very important task. I see... And without the ear, the body doesn't hear. One part can't do what the other part does. Everybody in the church is vital to the success and function of the church. To the overall function of the church. God put us in the tasks and the roles that He desires to be. Just like how our tools are to be used in their correct function. If you are a member of the church and you feel like you're suffering. This is also covered in Acts chapter 12, or 1 Corinthians chapter 12. In verse 25, where it, in verse 26, where it talks, if one member suffers, all members suffer of the body. If you need, need our prayers, please come to us. And if you are not yet a member of the body and want to become one, we encourage you now to come as we stand and as we say. I am resolved no longer to linger
Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for everything that you blessed us with, Lord. Thank you for everything that you've given us, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to have a life that we can come and worship you, Lord, without persecution. Lord, thank you for the deacons and the elders and the ministers that we have, Lord. Be with them and the decisions that they make to, to bear up the church, Lord. Lord, please be the ones who are unable to make it here tonight, Lord, for whatever reason that may be. Be with the ones who are sick. Be with the doctors and the nurses that take care of them, Lord. Lord, also be with us as we go throughout this week, Lord, that we can take what we learn from your word. And we can tell our friends, our co-workers, our family about your word, Lord, and bring uh, bring them to you, Lord. Keep us safe. Keep us safe to the next point in time. Just in my prayer. Amen.